Hello, makers. Welcome to 3D Maker Noob. No, I am not DJ Noob, and I will not be reviewing turntables, I think. What I will be doing, though, is using this turntable to explain a new feature that's on the Core 1. And I'm going to explain this... And I'm going to explain this process through the art of noobsplaining. Now, if you have a Core 1, or you are about to get a Core 1, you probably are aware that there is basically one way to accurately tune the belts for the Core XY mechanism. You use the belt tuner feature by Prusa, and you do this by strumming the belt, and will tell you what frequency it is at. At this point, the next step is to either tighten or loosen the belt in very small increments until you get that desired frequency. A lot of people struggle with that, and you notice this because a lot of people uh, tend to complain about a lot of head banging on the Core One. Now that type of head banging this type of headbanging. The ultimate goal is to just have just a couple of headbangs for it to measure where it's at in terms of home and calibration, and you're done. However, now there is a new firmware coming out. Technically, it's already been out for a while, uh, but it was in the alpha stage, and at time of recording, it is in a release candidate stage. So this is something that will be implemented very soon once the firmware is finalized. So I figured I'd get a head start and show you exactly what this feature will do. And who else would you want to explain such a complex thing than, than a noob? Time for some noob explaining. This is what we call a direct drive turntable. The main motor that turns the table is connected directly to the AC power. Now with AC power, obviously you have fluctuations and this is where all these dots come in. You have four rows of dots. When you switch it on, the first thing you notice is there is a red light over here. Now what you're seeing is a solid red light. However, it's flashing so fast that you cannot actually see it. Usually flashing at around a hundred times per second. If you look at these dots over here and I press start, you can see that they're basically static. They are moving just a little bit. They're going a bit too fast. So what we do is we adjust the slider. It goes just a little bit slower. And now as you can see, if I hold my um, hex, almost static. Why is this important? This is pretty much what's going to be happening with the Core 1 and the new belt tuning wizard. Now, before we start the whole process of how to tune the belts, I want to show you exactly what is happening in comparison to the turntable. As you can see, there is a slight movement in the upper belt. What is happening here is that the extruder is exciting the belt at a certain frequency, which currently is 95.5 Hertz. And the reason why you're seeing these weird lines going through the lens is because the LED lights inside the printer are flashing extremely rapidly at a certain frequency to do a stroboscopic effect, which is the same thing on the turntable. Now, if I change the frequency at which the extruder motor is moving the belts, you will see that there is a change in movement in the belt itself. So lowering it to 93 hertz, I can see more movement. If I lower it further, it starts moving less. And what I'm looking for is the peak movement of the belt with smooth motion going back and forth, along with the highest peaks at the back and the front of the belt. So that is the aim here. What you want is when you set the belt tension to the frequency that you want, the visual representation is that you have that long smooth stride back and forth uh, of the belt with the highest peaks at the front and at the back. Now, before I continue, just to keep this in mind, on the GitHub page for the alpha version, it specifically states it is okay to have a deflection of around eight hertz between the top and the bottom. That is perfectly acceptable. So do not worry if you do not get them exactly on point. So now that that's hopefully explained, we can go through the wizard itself. There is the on-screen wizard way of doing this. There's also the new way of doing this because why not? So on the on-screen menu, we're gonna go to settings and scroll down all the way to manual belt tuning. It's gonna show you a QR code where you can get the instructions, click continue. The first thing you need to do is to make sure that the gantry is completely square. And you do this by pulling the gantry forward, go on each side, and if there is any movement, what you can do is simply undo the belt tensioners on either side until you no longer have any movement. 
that means that the gantry is square. Once that's done, we're gonna click on continue. The printer is gonna home, and it's gonna tell you that it's gonna start measuring the upper belt frequency first. So we're gonna click on continue, and the vibrations of the belt starts. So currently it is set at 95 Hertz. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move the dial to change the frequency at which the belts are moving in order to see exactly at which frequency they are currently at. So at 95 Hertz, there's barely any movement. If I start lowering it down, I can see that there's much more movement there. And what I have to do is find the right frequency where I get the most movement back and forth with the highest peaks. And in this case, this would be it, which is 91.5 Hertz. So I'm gonna click OK. Basically, I told it that the top belt is currently at 91.5 Hertz. Now it's time to do the lower belt. So I'm gonna start lowering the dial to see the frequency that the bottom belt is at. And that is the movement I'm looking for. It is currently set at 85 Hertz. I'm gonna click OK. It will tell me that the upper belt is currently set at 91.5 Hertz and the lower belt at 85 Hertz. It also tells me that the optimal tension for the belt is between 90 and 98. So now I'm gonna click on continue and it's gonna tell me how many turns I need to do on each screw of the uh, belt tensioners in order to get the desired frequency. And in this case, it's two eighths of a turn. Now this is relatively straightforward, but I wanted to take a short pause here because two eighths of a turn, fine. That's a quarter of a turn. Sometimes it's like three eighths of a turn. So you have to kind of like calculate how much three eighths of a turn is. Personally, I think it would be great if there is kind of like a dial and a clock to show you exactly which position you should turn it to. This was something that I believe BCN 3D Sigma had done years ago when it came to adjusting the, uh, the bed leveling. Yes, because we used to do that manually. And I think visually that would be much more appealing. What I'm gonna do now is tighten both idlers a quarter of a turn. Now at this point you have two options. You can click on continue because you're done. You've turned your tensioner screws a quarter of a turn and you have to assume that that's okay or else you can go to adjust and it starts the whole process again to verify that that is the frequency that you have tightened it to. So at this point, this is where you kind of like go back and forth to keep on tuning because then it tells you to adjust a bit back until you find the desired frequency. Now in my case, the first time I tried this, I didn't follow instructions because why would I? So instead of what I did was I followed my common sense train of thought. Now while I don't know if this is an acceptable alternative, it kind of actually worked for me, so I'm using that instead of going through the wizard. I want to show you how. So we're going to go through the wizard again. I'm going to go to settings, manual belt tuning, make sure that the gantry is square, let it home, and we're going to start with the top belt. What I'm going to do now is I know that the top belt should be around 96, the bottom belt should be around 92. So I'm going to set this at 96 hertz. Then I'm going to go to the top belt tensioner and I'm going to very gently and slowly adjust it until I get that movement that I'm looking for, which is right there. This tells me that the top belt is at 96 hertz. So I'm gonna click OK. Bottom belt is gonna be set to 92 hertz. So I'm gonna adjust the bottom tensioner very gently, very slowly. And so once again, I get the movement I'm looking for. I'm just gonna click OK. Upper belt is 96. Bottom is 92, click continue. We don't need to turn the tensioner. Click continue and it's finished. And I feel that that is a much straightforward way. Now, this is working for me. I don't know whether it's official or not. I absolutely have no idea, but it kind of works and it makes life a bit easier rather than having to go back and forth, adjusting the screws, just set the desired frequency, adjusting those tensioners until you just get you hit that sweet spot. As for me, I know you're surprised you've seen a video from me. Now imagine there was another one next week and one the week after that. Who knows? Possibilities are endless. It's been a while since I said this, but make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, happy making.